so this is okay uh, my sc uh, screen this this time you'll have to tell me if you can see my screen i prefer that yes sir it's visible pleasure super so um i'm really happy that on a sunday evening uh, there are people uh, who can take out uh, some of their evening time which is probably meant on a sunday evening to do something more fun than this uh, to look at this as a long term investment it's going to add to the overall wellness uh, so i'm really happy that you're here and i'm happy that i'm now making good use of my sunday evening which would otherwise be wasted in watching some rubbish on netflix so thank you once again uh, before we begin the core of this today's discussion let's just look at this and i'm sure everyone's looking some of them uh, with their mouth wide open like whoa this is what's happening in the world yes these are the rates of burnout but uh, don't get easily carried away by just looking at the numbers uh, if you look them look at them closely you will see that although there is a ranking here top one rank to the top lowest rank here to the lowest rank here all of them are burnt out and the percentages are very very minorly different the take home point here of course is that all specialties are rapidly burning out irrespective of where they practice and what they practice then comes the question how do you cope with this burnout uh, i have gone through this myself i've sought help from professionals i've taken breaks from my career to just fix this problem for myself and then go on to help younger colleagues sometimes even older colleagues so i've read this uh, fantastic article uh, and i've also gone through this when i worked in the uk this manual and we understood then that there are multiple factors that lead to burnout uh, from these articles we picked up seven as you can see these seven factors that lead to burnout number two is sleep wake cycle disruption in some ways it's also the hierarchy it's probably the second worst problem uh, second worst factor that's leading to rapid burnout of healthcare professionals so we're going to discuss this uh, in some detail today but before that we'll just divert a bit to talk about code blue uh, it's india's first wellness startup exclusively for healthcare professionals and exclusively by healthcare professionals as you can see here we are a registered company we're really small but we're slowly growing with everyone's help in understanding how business works and how it works for healthcare professionals in this unique uh, sector of wellness our vision and mission is of course to fight burnout uh, through skills products services we are targeting the vulnerable groups most because they are the ones left out from all such initiatives we are trying to bring in uh, old hobbies and rekindle that fire providing logistic support to young doctors nurses uh, in largely trust and government hospitals which are underfunded where uh, the young youngest healthcare providers are often sacrificed uh, some point we hope that we are able to create an alternate source of income for doctors and nurses through their own hobbies we are still trying to work on the business model we need a lot of help from uh, good friends and well wishers and the big family of code blue of which you all are a part of now so code blue i'll just give you some quick examples uh, dr linda co-founder she's a, a dermatologist and she always complains that somewhere uh, while doing mbbs she lost her uh, her uh, hobby of playing with dough playing with clay and now after being a practicing dermatologist she's gone on to make some home handmade soaps healthy for the skin she's gone on to make her own unique uh, recipe for protein uh, bites and uh, this is her poster we're trying to sell these products for her there's also another doctor Uh, who suffered a lot during internship various types of illnesses she fought back and made this wonderful wellness calendar for healthcare professionals again we are trying to have these sold on her behalf we've done multiple events during covid we went convinced the dean of this covid center in mumbai uh, got paid for this event and we did a painting event during covid for all the doctors and nurses some glass painting as you can see we went on to do open mic poetry events for doctors in various languages across india all types of specialists all ranks from junior to senior as you can see here some fantastic reviews for us from there we went on then to do a couple of guitar workshops in various institutes as you can see the guitar trainers are all doctors 
Uh, and the USP of this is that we do it during work hours, getting permission from the dean, such that residents, while they are working, interns, while they are working, can come and get hands-on. So this is not a talent show where somebody is showing off how well they can play, but it's making sure everybody gets to hold the guitar, feel it, understand what it is to practice a hobby while going through the grueling period of internship and residency. Some letters of love from us, from all these young doctors and some of them nurses also. We went down to do a photography online event and it's surprising how a cardiothoracic surgeon has uh, so much energy and so much dedication towards photography and still pursuing it. Yes, one of our good friends, uh, uh, an ENT surgeon, uh, then did a uh, uh, painting virtual uh, event for us, which also went very well. We had a picnic in Bangalore where we got doctors coming in from duty, doing silly things and making sure all the other participants also do those silly things with them. And mind you, very few of these people actually know each other. They've just got together because of Code Blue and they've gone on to become good friends. Similarly, in uh, Mumbai, a uh, little off Mumbai, we had this fantastic picnic. Uh, again, some of them doctors, dentists, nurses, psychologists, Ayurvedic practitioners coming together, sharing thoughts on wellness and, and just having a good time. Coming back then again <laughs> to today's discussion, uh, which is sleep uh, hygiene and uh, for sleepless medical. So let's talk about the sleeplessness, which is our real problem issue first. As you can see from the annals of emergency, of annals, annals of medicine and surgery, we have this uh, study which talks about sleep disorders amongst medical students. It's baffling to see this statistic uh, from here. As you can see, hypersomnia is there in almost 25% of medical students and insomnia is there in almost 20%. So we are actually talking about one in every four to every one in every five medical students uh, having some form of sleep disorder. So these numbers are staggering. Moving on to something more intense. So what does this lead to? This is a study by the American College of Cardiology. Uh, this study is talking about what sleep duration does to your risk for myocardial infarction. Please hold your breath because this is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, a little scary, but uh, nonetheless interesting. So the study is a prospective study done over a duration of seven years involving more than 4,50,000 participants and almost 5,000 of them over the period ended up with NMI. We believe that looking at these numbers, looking at the journal, this is a good quality study. So we're going to do this in a bit more detail now. The study went on to divide subjects into three categories. The short duration sleepers, let's call them the under sleepers who slept six or less hours. The long duration sleepers who slept for nine or more hours. And the reference group, which is a bit six to nine, or you can say seven to eight group, seven to eight. And th those were the, let's say, balanced sleepers. Okay, so these are the three groups. Now let's look at the first result that they came out with. The under sleepers who slept less than six hours had a 20% higher risk for incidental myocardial infarction. All right. The hazard ratio, as you can see, is 1.2, which is significant. And so is the confidence interval. Moving on to the oversleeping category, even they had a 34% higher risk. You can see here the hazard ratio is 1.34, but the confidence interval being a bit wide uh, brings about a few questions here. Nonetheless, we'll go on to the second half of the results. The Let's say the balanced sleepers, somewhere between six to nine hours category. It's fantastic because it says this group mitigated, that means they bypassed their risk for MI, even amongst individuals who were considered to be high genetic liability for MI, which then means, as you can see, the hazard ratio is significant, which then means that in some ways, sleep is an independent risk factor for MI and good sleep can sometimes help you escape MI even if otherwise, because of a genetic composition, you were likely to get one. This is just for those who are interested in a bit more uh, depth understanding of research. They've gone on then to do a multivariable hazard ratio and they found something very interesting. So people who, who are the short sleepers, we know that they are at risk for MI. 
But when they did a Mendelian randomization, they found that even if you slept up to seven hours, you're not in such a great position after all. You still have a 19% risk for MI, which then means you could take one extra hour and go on to eight hours of sleep. That's between seven to eight hours of sleep. You show that maximum green 20% reduction of MI, which means that if you go above nine hours, again, the risk builds up. However, through the Mendelian randomization, it was told that the sweet spot was between seven to eight hours. Please remember that number. We're going to revise it at the end of this discussion. Further, because it's relevant to other young population, the young participants that are there on today's discussion, even youngsters now are presenting with coronary artery disease. As you can see, over the, uh, over the last few years, in 2004, up to 4% of youngsters presented coronary artery disease. As you can see from 2010 onwards, it's almost doubled. These are statistics straight from a journal of cardiology. But I would like to add a personal anecdote. That's because I am working in the emergency department and I've been there for the last eight years. It's been staggering how I have seen that difference. Uh, in my first year when I joined post-graduation in emergency medicine, for me, a typical 50, 60 year old person coming with chest pain was high probability MI. And the younger ones, I would always say they are very, very low. They may have pericarditis. They may have a pneumothorax. They may have some non-cardiac chest pain. But last few years, I have noticed that change. I have seen at least eight to 10 youngsters, the youngest being 26 years old, coming with an MI, ST elevation MI. In fact, on one of my shifts, my uh, junior resident told me, that he's got an ST elevation MI on a 28 year old. And I said, there's a mistake. Either you've got the wrong ECG or you've got the wrong patient or you've got the finding wrong. We repeated it and we were baffled to see that it was an ST elevation MI. And this young patient was taken up for an urgent angioplasty to show a 90% block in the left anterior descending coronary artery. Similarly, we have started seeing young strokes, 25 year olds, 28 year olds, 30 year olds, increasing number over the last few years. So from personal experience, I would say, please take these statistics significant. Uh, significant they are stat significant statistics. Let's please take them seriously. However, I would hate to just keep on discussing the problem, be a complainer and not discuss solutions. So let's uh, discuss some solutions. First thing, if you're a young medical student, there's only one solution for you. Please sleep, sleep well. Preferably not during your class hours during day. Uh, the night is completely yours. You're not expected to do uh, major uh, groundbreaking work during nights. You're expected to sleep, attend your medical school during day. Your evenings are meant to study. Evenings are meant to have some fun. But please reserve the nights for sleeping. Of course, the one odd party is, is okay. But don't make it a habit. The night is best meant for sleeping. Please sleep. Moving on to the next segment of people uh, who are at attending these lectures today. Uh, some of them interns already, some of them residents, but many of you who are likely to become interns and residents in the next few years. Here, sleeping in the night may not necessarily be an option for you. Uh, it may just become a luxury sometimes on duties that you're doing for the hospital. In that case, we'll discuss something a bit more in detail for you. Let's first understand sleep physiology. So we've understood that you need seven to eight hours of sleep. We have, okay. Sleep debt is an interesting concept. The sleep debt is we all need these seven to eight hours of sleep. On a certain day, if you get less than that, say you get five hours of sleep, you have a sleep debt of one to two hours. You need to pay that debt. The next day, pay the debt off by sleeping one to two hours extra. Now, this is my favorite statistic here. This says that if you haven't slept for 20 to 25 hours, okay, you haven't slept at all, and you come in to work the next day, your cognitive level proven by studies is that of someone who has a blood alcohol concentration of 0.1%. That is 100 mg per deciliter. Now, I don't know if you all already know, some of you may want to put in the chat box. What is the legal limit for drunken driving in India? Anybody wants to take a guess? 
not that you should uh, try your luck with it, but just if anybody knows the numbers. Okay, so the legal limit in India is 30 mg per deciliter, after which you get fined for drunken driving. So what this means is that if you haven't slept for 20 to 25 hours and you come to work the next uh, day, you're literally worse than a drunk person treating patients. So please don't do that. Sleep well before you come to work. Sometimes it's not in your hands, but sometimes it is. So please grab that opportunity, not just for yourself, but also for the well-being of your patients. Let's discuss this. Uh, this is probably the meat of today's discussion. The main course, let's say, if some of